I am not making the argument that misinformation isn't real. Misinformation is real. Propaganda is real. We see this in, in times of war. There's never anything I don't take from, from Russia, and I don't check, double-check and recheck to make sure that it's legit. And I'll say I do the same exact thing when it comes to Ukraine. Propaganda is huge in any war environment. Misinformation is key. Remember, Vladimir Putin, he might have been a terrible KGB agent, but he still was a KGB agent. He's a guy who trained for 15 years, spent his time in East Germany. He is built on lying. Everything he does, everything he says is a complete and total lie. It's all he knows how to do. The propaganda war is everything. And the Ukrainians, who are desperate for more dollars, desperate for more artillery, desperate for more ammunition, well, they're going to do the same to try and get people on their side. And we should be clear, I'm in favor of sending artillery uh, to Ukraine. Not troops, but I have no problem with artillery. Welcome, everybody, to the Morning Rumble. How the hell are you? Tony Katz, good to be with you. Presented by Americans for Prosperity. Dot org. They're in your state. They're in your town. You should join. Check out their conversations about economic liberty and free speech. This is a conversation about both. Because I saw this from, from Barack Obama, former president of the United States. He said that he was heading out to Stanford to talk about misinformation. The exact quote, I have it, I have it over here. Do I need my glasses? No, I'm good. I'm heading to Stanford to deliver a speech about changes in the way we create and consume information and the very real threat it poses to democracy. Disinformation, he writes, is a threat to our democracy and will continue to be unless we work together to address it. So what the hell is he talking about? Well, here's Barack Obama right here in his own words. Essentially clinically tested the vaccine on billions of people worldwide. Around one in five Americans is still willing to put themselves at risk and put their families at risk rather than get vaccinated. People are dying because of misinformation. I already mentioned the 2020 presidential election. Yeah, well, we'll don't need to hear about the 2020 presidential election. People are dying because of misinformation. I, I don't disagree that there are people who have died uh, uh, regarding misinformation, but if he wants to bring up vaccines, well, then we need to bring up exactly what took place in America regarding vaccines. You had presidential candidates and vice presidential candidates who said they would not take or they would fear taking or they weren't sure about taking a vaccine because it came from Donald Trump. Was that misinformation? Was that just standard political nonsensical fear mongering? You never explained to a vast amount of Americans what the efficacy was going to be in a vaccine because anytime anybody asked a question about the vaccine, those people were shut down. And big tech worked aggressively, overtime, purposefully and willfully to keep those people from speaking. I say this as somebody who believes the vaccine works. I say this as somebody who has no issue with the vaccine. I don't believe in mandates. I don't think anybody should have to take a vaccine if they don't want to. I don't think anybody should have to wear a freaking mask if you don't want to, by the way, Philadelphia. Philadelphia brought back the indoor mask mandate on Monday, and this is Friday, as we're doing this video. Hey, how are you? And on Friday, they've gotten rid of it. That's not science. It's not science to do something on a Monday and get rid of it on a Friday, a mask mandate, which means that the mandate itself was based on misinformation, fear-mongering, pushing narrative as opposed to facts. Isn't that what misinformation is? Misinformation is all about fear-mongering. Misinformation is about pushing a narrative, a theory, a fable, as opposed to factual information. In a society that doesn't have misinformation, we have all of the information. We've got people talking about different things in different ways, and then we can start deciphering what is true and what isn't because we're forced to defend our theories, our thesis, our ideas. And the only way to do that is with facts because if someone's doing it with just emotion, we move those people to the side. They got no place in our lives. 
boom, gone. Except the emotion people are now the ones who consider themselves the leadership. They're the elites. Note the new fight in the culture war. And yes, they're the ones fighting the culture war. I'm just saying we're fighting it as well. When they say, oh, you just want to fight a culture war, damn straight, and I plan on winning. Hell yes, I'm fighting a culture war. No, it's not even a question. There's no doubt I'm fighting a culture war here. I'm trying to save a nation. I'm trying to save a society for the love of God. But the elites have now taken to the idea that, ah, oh, you see misinformation. You see, that's the problem. They, they usually wear the their, their glasses, oh, yes, hmm, the misinformation. <laughs> and, then, and then they tell you how uh, all these people are misinforming you. And you see this now everywhere. Uh, this is Randy Weingarten in the American Federation of Teachers. Same. It's, it's this notion. And look, we're, you know, we've been very lucky in America, and we in some ways live in a bubble for a long time. This is propaganda. Yep. This is misinformation. This is the way in which wars start. This is the way in which hatred starts. I don't disagree that misinformation is the way hatred starts. She's talking about the Parental Rights and Education Act, which people like her term the don't say gay bill. Now, utilizing the term don't say gay is misinformation. The Florida bill, the Parental Rights and Education Bill, which says we're not going to teach second graders about gender identity, never says don't say gay anywhere in it. But they all are so glad to glom on to this lie of don't say gay, which is misinformation. And here she is in charge of a teacher's union saying this is how wars are started. She's guilty of the thing. But because she is an elitist, she believes she can fear monger to others. Engage this fear porn, misinformation, 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 and get us to somehow react. Oh, yeah, those people are engaged in misinformation. She starts with the premise that she is lying because she will engage it as a don't say gay bill. And don't just think it's a former president and don't just think that it's a union head just trying to, you know, keep her paycheck coming in. Here's Brian Stelter doing the exact same thing. The leading today's show with the rarely seen human toll of America's latest fight over LGBTQ rights. Let's just be honest. Hate and homophobia is lurking right beneath the surface in American politics right now. Years of increasing acceptance of gays and transgenders is provoking a backlash on right-wing talk shows and in state houses. That's the backdrop for this Washington Post piece about libs of TikTok, a Twitter account that shares and sometimes ridicules public posts from progressive educators and others deemed libs. Keller Lorenz's story revealed the identity of the conservative woman running libs of TikTok, and now there's a roiling debate about her story and the ethics of it, but there's no debating the influence of the libs of TikTok account. It's even helped inform Florida's recent parental rights law deemed the don't say gay bill by opponents. So here's what I want to know. What's it like to be caught in the middle of all this? What's it like for an educator who says that don't say gay law is a life or death issue for young trans people? A couple of things right there. Uh, first, when you say critics call the don't say gay bill, uh, you're buying into and you're promoting the misinformation. Second, this story about Taylor Lawrence of the Washington Post and the libs of TikTok account, we should be clear. This was an attack on a citizen who took videos that are already out there from educators and others and shared them with an audience. Just like I shared that clip with you. I guess Taylor Lawrence is going to write her next article about me. Uh, it's Katz, K-A-T-Z. But I'm not somebody who is doing this behind the scenes. I'm very much in front of the camera, literally, or in front of the microphone, literally. Taylor Lawrence did this not because it was an interesting story, but because the libs of TikTok account was extremely good at exposing the madness that's going on in our schools. Madness that is indeed violent in many cases. Madness that hurts children via indoctrination in many cases. And it's not what parents want. And parents saw these things and said, what in the world is this? 
in many ways, the libs of TikTok account was engaged in actual journalism, showing what's happening and letting people make their own decisions, not making decisions for them. And you know this is true because the libs of TikTok Twitter account never did the editing of the videos. They simply reposted the videos. That's all they did. And for that, Taylor Lawrence and the Washington Post went after this woman. As a matter of fact, her name, which I, I'm not using, uh, is shared with somebody else in California. And that other woman who has no connection to the libs of TikTok account was getting death threats. Because of this attack on someone who didn't engage in any misinformation at all. The misinformation comes from Brian Stelter, who dares say, don't say gay bill when that is not it. And no one is saying that at all and believes that the Republicans are guilty of homophobia. And that's what's causing all of this. No, it's parents in many cases, taking a look at what's happening with their schools and with their children saying, we don't agree. And then you have people like Randy Weingarten saying, well, this is just a culture war. And I'm saying, yes, it is a culture war, but these parents didn't start it. They've just now become aware of it. It is the teachers and it is the teachers unions and it is certainly many people on the political left, but certainly not all who are watching this happen or engaging in it. And they're only upset that you might be responding. That's what's happening. And so when you disagree, that has to get countered. And how does that get countered? By telling you that's just so much misinformation. Oh, it's just misinformation. It's a threat to our democracy. Barack Obama has the audacity to claim misinformation. Hey, here's this for misinformation. If you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. If you like your plan, you can keep your plan. That's misinformation. Barack Obama also said uh, very famously, I, I think I'm like the only person who, who caught this. He, he, he once said uh, that uh, too much information is damaging to society. Too much information hurts a democracy, right? That that um, a, a society that gets too much information is harmed. No, no, no. I argue that life before the Gutenberg press, that was harmful when people couldn't get any information at all. Now, I will agree there are sources out there that are terrible sources and sources out there that lie. And when you've got all those sources, it's very hard to get the information that you need. It does take more work but it's still worth it because if we listen to these fear mongers, these elitist fear mongers, they will tell you, well, that person can't be trusted, but they're the ones engaging in, in the misinformation. You call it the don't say gay bill. You're engaging in misinformation. You tell people, if you like your doctor, you keep your doctor, like your plan, keep your plan. And you know, it's a lie, misinformation. And you said it anyway, but look at the extent that they will go to keep you totally silent and docile, desperate to do it, desirous to do it. What's interesting is when you look at the numbers, it ain't working. Again, just to underscore the point, you mentioned it. Here's the generic ballot right now. If you average our NBC polling, we've taken this a few times this year. On average, Republicans right now leading the generic ballot by a point. You know, in 2018, at this same point, it was Democrats leading by it. You could yep. see that wave coming in 2018. That one point Democratic lead was very shaky in 2010. You could see Bush's big year for Republicans coming in 02. And you go back to 94. And again, it was 94 was a little different. This was the start of all of this sort of right. the president comes in, loses control in the midterm. Right. You couldn't quite see it coming in 94. But since then, you have been able to. So. Maybe it's not working. Maybe all of this lying, maybe all of this culture warring that the left is doing isn't working. Maybe people aren't buying in. Maybe people have come to recognize, look, I, maybe people are saying this, I'd like to still be a Democrat, but I don't want all this crazy. And I, I'm very okay with those people, right? We may disagree about some things, but if we agree about free speech, if we agree about uh, the levels of manipulation going on from a mainstream press, if we believe that free speech exists for the people you hate, not for the people uh, that you love, if we think that we should bring down inflation and we should actually, uh, I don't know, allow our children to learn as opposed to be indoctrinated, right? We've got things more than just uh, 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 on this one subject. Well, then, okay. 
We'll disagree about some other things. That's cool. But at least we can get along. I think there are people out there like that. I think that's what they're trying. That's what you're seeing in some of these numbers. I think they're trying. And I don't think that we should excoriate those people. I think we should kind of bring them back in. Make some friends. That's, that's my take. Now, you want one more piece of misinformation? Allow me to share this with you. I, I, I wasn't going to share this, but I was going to go right to the markets where, holy, holy crap. You seeing that? Dow is down 411. NASDAQ down 60. Whoo, my, oh, my, oh, my. I love uh, this story right here. House Republicans want the Twitter board to preserve uh, all their records. That's, that's just fun. That's just fun uh, right there. No, the story I wanted to get to was this one out of Colorado, man. I thought this was just terrific. I don't know if you saw it, where the governor of Colorado is trying to convince um, Disney to come on over. Did, did you did you see this? Here it is. So here, here's the story. Hold on. I've got it right here. Okay. So there it is. Colorado Democratic governor slams DeSantis for the socialist attacks. Now you come down here. This is from Fox News. It's right here. Florida's authoritarian socialist attacks on the private sector are driving business away. In Colorado, we don't meddle in affairs of companies like Disney or Twitter. Is that right? You don't meddle in the affairs of companies. Misinformation. Colorado says to Disney, come on over. We don't meddle in the affairs of companies. Colorado also says, hey, Masterpiece Cake Shop, if you don't decorate this wedding cake for a same-sex marriage, we're going to destroy your business and put you out of business. I mean, what did that take? All seven seconds to figure out? This is exactly what we're talking about. This is the misinformation that is out there all the time. The Colorado governor doesn't know that he's talking out both sides of his mouth. It was so, it took me all of seven seconds to put that out on Twitter at Tony Katz. You can follow me there. All of seven freaking seconds. Man, the elitism on display. They, they really believe they can talk down to you. They really believe that they can lecture to you. They believe that they're better than you. And they're not. So, you got that going for you. Let me go to the comments. Don't forget rumble.com slash Tony Katz. That's where you want to be. We're building up the Rumble page huge. Uh, do we like Rumble? What, what, what do we think? Rumble.com slash Tony Katz. And you can comment there and you can, you, can, you can hit the tip jar. You can leave comments. You can be a part of it. It's pretty fantastic. And it's growing. Uh, let me go uh, to the comments here. Brian, uh, it's Stelter. Not, it's not Seltzer. Knows as much about defining this information as he does staying out of a refrigerator. Come on. That is not nice to do. People do that about me all the time. Oh, yeah. I, uh, fat jokes and uh, I'm, I'm buck tooth or beaver teeth. Beaver teeth. That's, that's, that's always. That's always. Someone, someone wrote me uh, today for the morning show, for the morning radio show. And uh, you've got a boring ass show. That's, that's what they wrote me on Twitter. Took the time to write that. Didn't listen to be like, this sucks. I'm going to change the station. No, no, no. Made sure to write me. People are special. Don't do things like that, Kenneth. My gosh. This is from Mike and Steph Paul. What's up, guys? Uh, their own misinformation is being exposed. So now they will further attempt to censor and control. Now, that part is true, right? They get caught in this, in this nonsense that they push. And so what do they do? They double down. Right? The first rule of holes, do you know the first rule of holes is? Stop digging. If you're in a hole, stop digging. And yet they keep going down the line. They believe they can just lie enough and lie enough and lie enough and lie enough and it'll work out. Brian Stelter believes that he is pious. It's stunning. It's shocking. He's not pious. I question whether or not he's bright. Now, he was able to get the show and keep the show. But I think, oh, sorry about that. I hit my microphone. Zucker was his guy. Zucker was his guy. And now without Jeff Zucker, how much longer does he have a show? But then again, all of CNN Plus. Holy crap. CNN Plus. 
Thir less than 30 days. The XFL put out a tweet. We lasted longer than CNN+. Plus. They put $300 million behind it. They put $200 million in advertising behind it. And they decided to cancel the service. Canceling the service. And you know why that is? Hubris. Let me share this with you. This was Trevor Noah on his show over there at Comedy Central. CNN Plus announced today the streaming service is shutting down. It launched March 29th. Warner Brothers Discovery Networks made that decision, though, saying it was about quality and, quote, customers will be best served with a simpler streaming choice. Last week, CNBC reported that the streaming service had less than 10,000 views a day. About $300 million has been invested so far in CNN Plus. The plan, according to my sources, was to put a billion dollars into it over the course of four years, hoping to hit profit after four years. Wow, did they say that less than 10,000 views a day? <laughs> you could have just been on TikTok. Let us not mock TikTok. All right, there's a lot of crap on TikTok, but people are making insane money on TikTok and people are getting more than 10,000 views a day. But he's bringing up a point that he doesn't even understand, at least from that clip. When you're starting a service, and, and uh, by the way, I, I'm, I'm living this experience right now. I'm living this experience because I'm, so I'm a radio host, right? By, by, by trade, if, if you will. That's how most people know me. So my content is free, right? Let's make that argument. My content is free. I have sponsors, just like I have here with Americans for Prosperity, and we do our best to get more people to know about them, to engage with them, to interact with them, and, and really what they're all about, which is about this conversation of having this free exchange of ideas, which is one of the reasons they so oppose misinformation and the idea of people pushing that everything's misinformation if you don't like it. That's not the case. You need more people in the square engaging so you can bring your ideas to the fore so people can share them and then realize what's a good idea and what's not. I love that Americans for Prosperity does that. But I provide content like this. So when I go now to, tr to provide content in a, um, in, in a sandbox kind of way, right? And we're on Locals, right? You can find us at TonyCats.Locals. Dot com. We're going to be having content there that you can't get anywhere else. And we have a subscription service for that. It is difficult to get people to say, hey, I'll even I'll pay for even more when I'm getting so much. I have two shows a day. I've got my cigar and bourbon show, Eat, Drink, Smoke. And now and, and now uh, adding adding another thing. What that does is that it, it says, what is, is is it really worth it? Am I getting something there at TonyCats.Locals.com that I can't get from everything else I get from Tony Katz? As a content creator, that's a legitimate concern. And CNN Plus never asked themselves that question. To me, that's pretty obvious. Somebody wanted just more of Anderson Cooper. We needed to know the real Don Lemon. No. No, we did not. There was no reason for it. And they never asked themselves, what was the purpose of this? Now, Fox created Fox Nation. But Fox Nation benefits from the fact that its personalities have personalities. And they have a, a, an audience that is interested in their lives outside of TV. They're interested, for example, in Steve Ducey and cooking. They're interested in hearing Dana Perino uh, talk about whether it was life in the White House or some of these uh, other things, her views uh, on life uh, that you, you, you've you got. Uh, Ainsley Haynes uh, that um, that talks about uh, her, her connection, her, her religious connections, right? These people have the, the, these uh, the, these things. I call her Ainsley Haynes. I, call, I do that all the time. I do that all the time. That, that was... That was West Wing. Oh, I'm going to get yelled at. Ah, oh, ah, oh, if there was only an on the fly edit button. But you know what I'm talking about. They have these other parts of their lives that they get into and they get involved in. And people want to be a part of that. They want to be a part of something Heg Seth or, or Kilmeade are, 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 are doing. So they'll pay. They'll pay to be a part of that thing. CNN offered none of that. CNN offered nothing interesting because their audience isn't interested. The audience, you have to know where your audience is and what it is that they're all about. 
And when you see the shrinking numbers at CNN, you realize that their audience isn't about the personalities. Their audience is about how much can I hate Trump and then where else can I find more stuff to hate Trump with? No one's interested in Brian Stelter. They're interested in some good little quip, some lie about misinformation, and then they're off. No one cares about what his, what his hobbies are. You know, he, he makes uh, ships and bottles. Brian Stelter, he's famous for making ships and bottles. I have no idea if that's true. I don't know what his hobbies are. No one cares. Because he has never made himself somebody who connects with an audience. He is somebody who lectures to an audience. And you can't connect with somebody you're lecturing to. You got to talk, baby. You got to sit down with a cigar and some bourbon and share. By the way, it's been Passover. And I've been wanting to crack that bottle. That's a Jefferson's rye that's finished in cognac casks. I'm a rye guy. Oh, I love rye. And I will, I will, daddy want in this, in this conversation, I am daddy. I want wanting to open that bottle all week and I've been staring at it and it's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I, people want to connect with people who are interesting and have something to say and have something to offer and have something to share. And you feel a connection. No one feels a connection with Brian Stelter. No one feels a connection with Alison Camarota. No one feels a connection with uh, uh, Don Lemon. No one. And over there at CNN Plus, a lot of people lost their jobs. There will be people out of work. And I will tell you, uh, who is the one from MSNBC who just went over there? Who is the one from MSNBC who, who just went over there? Uh, Casey, is it Casey Hunt? Is that her name? Uh, she uh, was going to have a show on CNN Plus. And she said, all right, so I guess this isn't going to be happening. My job right now is going to be helping those people who are out of a job find a job because she's got a contract for a million a year. I'll tell you, I respect that. I, I, I may not agree with her politically at all and in any way, shape or form, but that she's going to help people get jobs. Good on her. Uh, good on her. Yeah, people are out of jobs when they were told just a, a week or two ago that they would still have jobs. Chris Wallace came over from Fox, nine million a year. I guess he's going to end up with Chris Cuomo's own old time slot at 9 p.m. You got the new CEO coming in. Who knows what they're going to do? But CNN Plus didn't work because nobody cares about CNN hosts. And they certainly didn't want plus of them. When you create content and you're, as you're distributing that content, you got to ask yourself, is there enough that you can offer something special, something different, so people would be happy to pay for it because they want to feel even more connected and they know that this is what you do and it's helping you and helping them, helping everybody. Something you got to ask, something I ask all the time and we go through it all the time and what we're finding is, yeah, and I'm greatly, greatly appreciative. So head on over to Locals, TonyCats.Locals.com. We've got the regular content starting in May. We've been building up to it, and I greatly appreciate it. And here at Rumble, let me go to more of uh, the questions. When are you going to visit Gillespie Cigar Bar? Oh, that's down in Martinsville, right? Is that where that is? Down in Martinsville? It just opened a cigar lounge uh, right here in uh, uh, south of Indiana Indianapolis. Yes, Earhart. Yes, 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 Ainsley Earhart. I know we've sat on the couch together. I called her Ainsley Haynes. I, I suck. All right, fine. It's 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 on me. Well, that's just a rude comment right there. Sorry, I put that up. I didn't mean to. Come on, guys. There's no need for it. Don't be silly. Jody, I appreciate that you. Uh, Moved to Indy from St. Louis, where, uh, uh, by the way, my, my Cigar and Bourbon show is on News Talk St. Louis, so uh, you could have still listened to it uh, there. I appreciate that you listen. I appreciate that uh, you're a part of this. Don't forget to subscribe, rumble.com slash Tony Katz. Be doing that right now, and I'll catch you on Locals. I'll catch you on Rumble, and we'll catch you next time. Take care.